Hi guys. Oh, it's okay. So far, so good. Salam and a very good afternoon. Uh, well, so back to the same question. Has anyone here failed before? Yeah. Oh, Ooh, all right. Exams, relationship, surprise, surprise. Uh, well, I'm going to start with a story uh, back in 2006. I was completing an application form to get myself into a master degree program in oral and maxillofacial surgery in Hong Kong University. Then I saw my first degree class script clearly stated that uh, course Bachelor of Dental Surgery, year 1998, year one, anatomy, failed, biochemistry, failed, oral biology, failed, and physiology, failed. Fortunately, I'm not here to tell you about how I failed, <laughs> but I'm here to share with you about how did that failure brought me here. This was a uh, newspaper article last August uh, for our Independence Day. Uh, that was me, internationally recognized surgeon. So the story actually started with a big, big failure. In short, 1998, that big failure in life. 1999 the will to recover and the starting 14 years journey in my life. 14 years. Restarting 5 years of dentistry, 3 years of compulsory service, 3 years of master degree in Hong Kong U, and another 3 years of medical degree to be a full-fledged doubly qualified maxillofacial surgeon. So when I repeated my first year of dentistry, I think it was probably the worst moment in life. It was all doom and gloom, frustrations and despair, disappointment to parents, and all that. And it was never an easy thing to recover from that failure. And most of the time, um, I had I had the thoughts of giving up, basically, to change course, quit course. But then I realized two things that I appreciated most in life were, number one, that failure. Number two, was the second chance that was given to me. I still remember on the very first day when I repeat my first year, I was on my way to my 9 a.m. lecture. I had to walk through second year to change course, quit course. But then I realized two things that I appreciated most in life were number one, that failure. Number two, was the second chance that was given to me. I still remember on the very first day when I repeat my first year, I was on my way to my 9 a.m. lecture. I had to walk through second year's lecture hall. And as fate would have it, just about when I, when I passed through the, the main entrance of that hall, the second year's lecture ended. I knew that my original classmates were all inside. And they rushed out, and there was me alone standing in the middle of that pathway, needing to cross them. And I still remember some of the guys actually came to me, hugged me, pat me on my shoulder, and say things like, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. You can do this, bro. All the best. We are here with you, and all that. I think for those of you who have failed failure before, 
this would be the last thing that we want people to sympathize. Uh, we basically just want to be on our own. And it was the lowest moment where I self doubts. Uh, but yet again, the next three or four months, you know, uh, the same thought keep coming. Probably that history was not meant was not meant for me. Uh, I had the thoughts of uh, you know switching back to my old course, which was uh, Faculty of Science in Microbiology at that time. And and then I realized, you know, when we put extra effort to change, even though it was not a cold turkey, you know, the inner the inner strength do come. I realized one important thing on how to recover myself from that failure, and this is take one moment at a time. I do take one moment at a time during that time in a way that, you know, waking up early in, uh, early in the morning, attend classes, joining discussions, etc. etc. Uh, and well, I told myself that my story started with four acts and it should not end with F. So fast forward, at the end of the sixth year, my final year, I was the class valedictorian and was awarded with Anugrah Yesen Kuat Rahman, which was awarded to the best overall UM's graduate.
I still remember the struggle that I need to adjust because my wife and my kids, they were still in Hong Kong. Why? My wife actually decided to stay in Hong Kong because of one main reason. Basically to support the family. Uh, I was not on scholarships and salary. So she actually made a very huge sacrifice in the family by deciding to stay put in Hong Kong, earn some money, support the family, and raise my two kids, and also pay my fee. Uh, and at the end of medical degree, we welcomed the third baby. So the struggle was real, like babysitting while studying, uh, having three phases of long distance relationship in life over that 14 years journey. But why? Again and again, you know, the story of that failure back in 1998 came not just to me, but also to, 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 the, whole, to the whole family. We have the thought of quitting, but when we think back about the sacrifices and the obstacles that we have passed through, you know, we reflect and we root back so that we can achieve our goal. So here I am today, almost 19 years from that failure back in 1998. I am with a small craniofacial family in my hospital uh, with a couple of very dedicated doctors and nurses <coughs> trying to provide treatment to children born with facial and skull defects. And we are all here have our own struggles and hardships. And we are all here to provide you know, to offer things to give back to life together. So, ladies and gentlemen, in our journey, no doubts that once in a while there will always be thoughts of giving up. But before you give up, think of the reason why you held on for so long. Think about the obstacles that you have walked through and make them inspire you. Thank you very much.